really glad I get a chance here to talk with Mike Dennison. He's one of the good guys in in the news media. You know, I've I've worked on both sides of the camera, and and Mike is is one of those good guys. You know, he's he's somebody you can trust. He's somebody who really works to give a a fair, accurate uh, shot at the news. He's been covering Montana politics for decades with. Uh, the Lee newspapers with the Great Falls Tribune and now with the Montana Television Network. But he's got a new book out, Inside Montana Politics, a reporter's view from the trenches. Mike, hey, great to have you on the show this morning. Thanks uh, for calling in. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Aaron. I'm uh, pleased to be here. Uh, we should probably get, get it out of the way first so that folks know where they can see you this week. I think you've got book signings uh, in, in Bozeman and in Billings this week, right? That's correct. I'll be in Billings on Saturday at this House of Books downtown at 1 p.m., and I'll be in uh, at Bozeman on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. at the Country Bookshop, which is another bookstore right downtown there on Main Street. And I think I saw a tweet. You, they, they've dedicated the whole window space to you and in, in your new book, too. So, so they should be able to quickly spot it when they walk by. Did you already hit Boulder? Did you already knock that that book signing out near that is actually That is actually tonight at the Boulder Library, um, which is my first library event, which I'm really looking forward to. And uh, I'll probably be doing a few other library events so uh, later in the uh, later in the fall here. All right. And of course, the book is already available. So check out your local bookstore. Go to Amazon Inside Montana Politics. Check it out. Uh, Mike, what, what's kind of your favorite story that you tell in the book? Well, yeah, I, the, I lead with a chapter on the, the fall of the Montana Power Company back in the uh, late 1990s and early 2000s, yeah. which is probably one of the, the first really big uh, investigative slash explanatory stories that I covered as a political reporter. And this is when uh, the Montana Power Company led the charge for uh, restructuring or deregulation of its electric utility, um, and which you know, led to the demise of the company. And w- within a few years, it was uh, it converted to a telecom and went bankrupt, and uh, a lot of people lost a lot of money. And uh, it was really an incredible story how, how it all unfolded. Yeah, entire pensions were lost, uh, just devastating to so many folks across Montana. And yeah, it was basically they, they bought out of the, they decided to go into the, you know, telecommunications, but we were in the middle of the tech craze of the early 2000s. And so mm-hmm. they basically sold energy when it was low and bought telecom when it was high and it didn't work out at all. And so many people were just devastated by that. You covered a lot of uh, big names over the years as well, of course, you know, uh, you know, and one of my favorites was actually a guy that I had campaigned against in 2000. I was working for then Senator Conrad Burns and, you know, Brian Schweitzer, he was a tough campaigner, um, you know, and of course he eventually ended up uh, running for governor a few years later, won for governor, but man, he's been a character to follow over the years, hasn't he? Yeah, in fact, we talked about that campaign a little bit in the book about how you know, Schweitzer was someone who really did you know come out of nowhere, which is kind of a cliche, but he did, and uh, almost beat Comrade Burns in 2000. It was a very close race. Yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, I heard go- that Burns and his people going into the election day were telling Comrade that you know, you're probably going to lose this, but they uh, they did not calculate the fact that there was a pretty good turnout in rural Montana, which helped to pull him back into re-election. And then, like you said, Schweitzer came back again, ran for governor, served for two terms, and uh, was a a guy who would just uh, take you into his confidence and uh, was very open. Um, but there's a lot of people who didn't like the guy because he, he, he was a, a guy who, who played politics. Uh, he played hardball in politics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, even I think even one of his fellow Democrats called him a bully once, which usually was what the Republicans would call him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was on the floor of the, I believe, of the Senate one time, yes. Yeah, and in fact, speaking of floor of the legislature, uh, you know these these latest sessions have seemed fairly tame, I guess, compared to even some as recently as the two thousand seven legislature, which you uh, which you write about. Yeah, that's right. I think that you know the, the two thousand seven legislature, of course, is when um, they adjourned without even passing a budget, which was kind of a, a a move by the Democratic Senate. They thought the Republican House was going to adjourn, so they beat them to it, and then they had to come back three weeks later to craft the budget, and that's when Schweitzer kind of lined up this core of moderate Republicans to uh, team up with the Democrats to pass the budget. And that's kind of been the the modus operandi of of the way the legislature's worked since that time, that we have a conservative part of the Republican Party, which is really the majority of the party, but they cannot seem to form a block that can 
pass legislation. And so we have Democrats, minority Democrats, teaming up with moderate Republicans to do, to do a lot of major things. We started at that time and still kind of carries forth now. One of the, the kind of the cool things about Montana, you know, politics and elected officials is a lot of us, you know, and it, it's not just guys like you and me who talk with these folks regularly, whether, you know, on the radio or TV that you're doing. Really, it's it's anybody out there. We we look at our elected officials uh, on a first name basis. You know, it, it was Max and Conrad and Denny and uh and now it's greg you know we in in things like that we we call people by a first name basis but 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 really you i I think your your book also tries to portray kind of the really the personal side of this and and how even people who might be opponents to each other will will still look out for each other at least at least used to well well like you said Aaron, you know you know i've been doing this in terms of uh, kind of on both sides for you is that you know, we're so close to our political people in Montana because it, even though we're a big state geographically, we're still small in population, so you get to know people. And also, uh, politics in Montana and the government is incredibly open. At the, at the legislature, the Capitol, you know, as reporters, you know, we can just be on the Senate floor, be on the House floor. We have a lot of access to our public officials, which I think you probably don't have in some of these bigger states. And so that leads to uh, just a, a, a lot of collegiality and also, uh, you know, I worked outside the state a little bit, and I think that the politics in Montana, they're just a little more polite than they are in a lot of places, uh, even though people kind of uh, certainly have some bitter disagreements. I recall a time I covered a Senate race in Colorado many years ago, a U.S. Senate race, and the first debate I covered, I was just shocked. These guys were just at each other's throat right off the bat, and I had never seen anything like, like that in Montana. Yeah, and one of the stories that you talk about is a story about uh, former Senator Conrad Burns helping out a former Missoula City Councilman. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't think that uh, Conrad Burns and a Missoula City Councilman would, would be teaming up on something too often here, but, it, but he actually stepped up to help him out. That's right. It's kind of an extraordinary story that uh, I don't really think has been reported until now in the book. This is a fellow's name is Cass Kinski, who was a Democrat, who helped Burns get elected initially because he, uh, Mr. Kinski was so frustrated with a Democratic incumbent on some on some issues, John Melcher. And then about three years later, Kinski was arrested by the feds for growing marijuana in his basement, and they were really going to throw the book at him. And Conrad Burns stepped in to kind of help him out in a few situations when he was within the prison system. Yeah, interesting. So that and that's just some of the stories that Mike Dennison tells in this new book, Inside Montana Politics. Well, hey, we got a caller on the line here as well as we talk with Mike Dennison from the Montana Television Network about his new book. And of course, uh, and and our caller, I, I know the name. He's served in both the legislature and in the Public Service Commission. We got Brad Molnar on the line with Mike Dennison. Brad, good to hear from you. Question or comment? Yeah, I have a question for Mike. Okay. Uh, Mike, you've worked for the Great Falls Tribune, uh, Lee Enterprises, uh, to me that's Billions Gazette, and now uh, MTN. Have any of those organizations, do you feel, have any of those ever brought pressure on you to not write a story, not put a story within the story, or perhaps you just knew that you would be edited if you did? Oh, interesting you know, question. Um, that, that is a good question. And... I would say almost never. I mean, I, I can maybe recall one or two stories where uh, an editor might said, you know, we're not going to do that. We're not going to go that way. And it wasn't because of any sort of um, political reason. I think it was just because they felt like, you know, that wasn't uh, the journalistic thing that we wanted to do. But in terms of deciding what to cover and how to cover it, I mean, I, I think I've had incredible freedom from all my employers and it's certainly, you know, they want me to do certain things. But uh, since I've been a political reporter, uh, I've pretty much had free reign on, on uh, deciding a lot of things that I want to do. Mike Dennison on the phone lines with us here. Inside Montana Politics, a reporter's view from the trenches. Uh, Mike, what's your pitch out there to folks uh, for, for, you know, for your book here? Well, there's a couple things I wanted to accomplish with this. One was to kind of give people a window into... Montana history, the top figures in Montana history and political history in the last you know, 20 to 30 years. But at the same time, I wanted to get people a look at you know what it's like to be a reporter covering these figures. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we uh, cover and see as reporters that don't make it in the papers, that don't make it on the television newscasts. Um, you know, 
anecdotes or interactions or things that kind of really uh, make the story a little more intriguing. And that's a lot of the stuff in this book, just telling uh, how, how it happened and how we covered it and uh, these figures, how they uh, fit into kind of the, the historical arc of Montana during that period. And there also was one story that's really not a, a political figure. It's just a, a really great story about a guy I covered who was exonerated on a rape conviction that uh, I had a hand in covering. Yeah, that was the Cody Marble store, too. That'll uh, that'll be a fascinating one to read about. Is there a place to go to find all of your book, book signing schedules and everything like that for Boulder, Bozeman, and Billings this week? Um, you, you know, just... Uh, not there's not really a central account. I mean, I, I put it out on Twitter, of course, and uh, there's some events on my Facebook page. Um, but um, I've just been kind of doing as I can. And uh, but but the book is available in um, not only local bookstores, independent bookstores, but also you know Barnes and Noble. It, it's in, it's available there too as well. Right. And at a lot of gift shops and also online as well. So it, it's, it's uh, pretty easy to find if you want to find it. Great. Well, I'll try to post something on uh, MontanaTalks.com as well with the schedule for uh, for some of our listeners. And uh, well, great, greatly appreciate your time this morning, Mike. Safe travels on your book signing tour. Thanks for much, Aaron. I'm always happy to be on the show. All right. Sounds great. Yeah, good to talk with you.